Hi everyone, um, my name is Shazia Khan and the unit we'll be looking at today is communication skills for business. And we'll be looking at learning outcome three, which is to understand the factors that impact on the effectiveness of communication in businesses. So firstly, before we go on to learning outcome three, I just want to give you a recap of what we did in learning outcome two. So in learning outcome two, which was the last session, we looked at understanding how organisations communicate with customers. So the fact of how, what kind of resources they used, um, how they communicate face to face, things like that. Uh, we looked at uh, formal communication. So it could be through websites, it could be through face to face, public relations, um, we looked at uh, formal and informal communication, what both of them are. So formally is refers to the interchange of information uh, in a formal communication can help improve your, you know, the company's management. Informal is a type of communication that doesn't take place uh, using the formal methods. Um, so we looked at understanding how organisations communicate with customers. Um, we looked at effective communication, why it's so important with customers and why it's so important in regards to a business, why there's a need to have that kind of communication to enhance customer satisfaction, to foster this kind of relationship with the customer um, and also to explore different channels. So we looked at the different channels of formal communication, which were things like websites, uh, we looked at the uses, the overview and the advantages of that. For example, you know, people advertise on websites. They are 24-7, they are available and it re reaches a wide range of um, uh, customers internationally and both nationally as well. We then went on to look at brochures and why they are so important and how they, why they are used in marketing um, and what are they are there to do Um we looked at letters as a form of formal communication. Um, we looked at newsletters, emails uh, as a form of formal communication. Uh, telephone calls face to face is the most uh, personal form of communication. Uh, and it is for uh, some people prefer that kind of face to face interaction as it's direct engagement between uh, the parties, uh, the customer and the, um, the uh, worker. Uh, we looked at public relations and what it involves and why it's so important for advertising. We then went on to um, look at understanding how organisations communicate with customers in formal communication. So we looked at formal and these are informal communications, so social media. And this is a big um, way of communication and it's used uh, widely by all, most 90% of organisations um, to advertise uh, their um, content on uh, platforms such as like TikTok, maybe Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And it's a way of uh, getting brand awareness, but engaging with your customers as well. And it's immediately, so it's engaging immediately with the customers. Blogging we looked at and the importance of blogging for an organisation um, and how it is uh, a way of, you know, like creating and sharing articles. And then we looked at another uh, important one, which was influence and, and they have a significant impact on social media and organisation and uh, organisations collaborate with influence to promote their products or services. Uh, we then went on to looking at 2.1, which was to evaluate communication used by organisations to communicate with customers. And we used the case study of UK Varsity and looked at the elements of uh, communication with customers uh, because it's an online provider. We looked at UK Varsity's uh, websites, the strengths and the weaknesses of the website as well, and how it also an advantage is how it provides accessibility 24-7. We looked at emails um, and we looked at direct communication for UK Varsity. We also looked at the example UK Varsity. We looked at social media and the strengths and weakness for that. Uh, we looked at telephone calls, uh, learning management system, which is the LMS, uh, which is used by UK Varsity. 
to manage things like, you know, uh, the course content, student progress, um, and all the educational communication within um, the students. Um, we also looked at uh, the element of communication systems through websites, through email, social media, telephone calls, and as I said, the centralised platform LMS for um, UK Varsity and how um, the what the strengths are for them, but also we referred to what the weaknesses are, things like, you know, costing, it may be the fact that, you know, um, availability, um, technical issues, you know, the fact that, you know, some of the issues around the LMS system, learning management system, is technical issues or learning curve, you know, so the, we looked at elements of that in regards to a learning outcome two. Now we're going to go on to looking at learning outcome three, which is identifying um um, looking at understanding the factors uh, that impact on effectiveness of communication in a, in a business. So the unit aim is to develop uh, your knowledge and understanding of communication practices uh, within organisation and learners are introduced to the different modes of channels of communication used in organisations. In addition, learners will be able to develop their communication skills and learners would also apply their own communication skills to typical organisational requirements. So indicative content, the impact of organisational relationships, um, team coercion, uh, personal conflict, favouritism, hierarchical line management culture, the impact of non-verbal communication, so the tone of your voice is really important, your body language, uh, negative, positive reinforcement of oral message, contradiction of oral messages, active listening and focusing. Uh, impact of technology, so negative and positive impact of technology, so negative being reliance on technology at meetings, presentations can create stress. Positive is enhanced clarity of information helps reinforce messages and can help those with different communication styles and needs. The effectiveness is clarity, um, purpose, information, actions, required layout, length, message is received in the same as the one that is sent and the purpose is achieved. So key terminology, effectiveness of um communication so you know good communication is essential in any organization both for staff customers and stakeholders and poor communication can ruin the relationships of uh you know your reputation as an organizational uh, impact of non-verbal communication so non-verbal communication influence impact you know messages received so your language your body language what we looked at impact of technology um is the fact that you know the technology is growing there's so much going on with technology and the impact is huge on an organization or a business so understanding now we're going to look at understanding the factors that impact the effectiveness of communications in a business effective communication is uh, crucial for the success of any business several factors can influence how well communication occurs within an organization affecting everything from operational efficiency to employee morale. Um, and below, we're going to look at some factors uh, that look at um, the element of uh, effectiveness of communication in a business. So we'll look at the uh, key factors impacting the effectiveness. So we look at the organisational structure. So an organisational structure is um, how a business organises its staff to represent the different layers of management. This information can be displayed in the form of a chart. There are main, two main types of organisational structure used in a business, um, which we're going to look at is the hierarchical and flat structure. So firstly, the hierarchical structure uh, is often also referred to as a tall organisational structure. Uh, hierarchical structure has many layers of management and um, Businesses uh, with this structure often use a down, uh, top-down approach with a long chain of command. Uh, in a hierarchical structure, managers will have a narrow span of control and a relatively small 
number of subordinates. So they have a small number of staff. Uh, flat structure, on the other hand, is an organisational structure with only a few layers of management. In a flat structure, managers have a wide span of control with more subordinates and there's uh, usually a short chain of command. Flat organisational structures are commonly used by smaller businesses or those adopting a more modern approach to um, management. Each structure has its advantages and disadvantages. The most appropriate arrangement will depend on the size and the type of business, as we mentioned. Communication channels. So you've got a choice of channels, uh, email face-to-face -face affects the effectiveness of the me message. The, it, the, the message depends on things like, you know, how important it is and the nature of the message. Technology, the availability of technology um, in communication technology, such as video conferencing, which there's been an increase in things like that, and communication via Teams, things like that. And, and there has been an increase in elements of technology the next one is uh, cultural factors so language and communication styles um, which are promoting a culture uh, and diversity and inclusion you know things like you know making sure that the diversity within that there's gaps and making sure that you know um, employers feel valued and understood because that's a really important element of you know communication So the individual skills and competencies, and, and that is really important to identify your own skills and competencies, things like communication skills, um, whether there's, uh, you know, you should identify the skills of the individuals, including clarity, conciseness, and listening abilities play a vital role in effective communication. You know, they are really important. Um, training and development, so regular updates on training, webinars, Revelist CPD, making sure that they are, you, you know, their role is more effective and, you know, they are able to have regular training and development. Psychological factors uh, could be perception and attitudes. Employees' attitudes towards the organisation and their colleagues uh, may affect uh, what is received and interpreted. And motivation and morale as well. High levels of motivation and morale typically result in a more effective communication as engaged employees are more likely to share information openly. Physical um, environments, so workspace design, the design of the workspace, how the office is presented, how easily employees can communicate. Another physical environment would be noise distraction that might hinder communication. So you've got openness, organizational culture, so openness and transparency. That is really important because that makes sure uh, that is uh, encourages more effective communication as employees feel uh, important and also they feel comfortable with sharing information and giving feedback. Uh, trust and respect, really important one um, between the managers and staff. Uh, and this is an element of effective communication. Without this, you know, people would be scared and they would fear to have any sort of uh, communication and that hinders the barriers so summary table in regards to um, elements of communication uh, organizational structures um, the description is hierarchical versus uh, flat structures and the impact on communication it affects speed clarity and potential for distortion of messages the factor in regards to communication channels so the choice of the channel availability and reliability of technology, uh, the impact on communication that it determines appropriateness, efficiency and effectiveness. And then we've got cultural factors, um, which we'll look in more detail are things like language, communication styles, diversity, inclusion, and the impact on communication It influences understanding, inclusivity and effectiveness. Then we have individual skills and competencies, which is communication skills, training and development and impact on communication is that it enhances clarity, conciseness and listening abilities. The psychological factors is perceptions, attitudes and motivation and morale. Uh, 
uh, and this impact on it is affects how messages are received, interpreted and shared. Physical environment, workspace, design, noise and distractions. The impact on communication is it impacts ease of communication, concentration and understanding. Organisational structure and the description is openness, transparency, trust and respect, which we went through, and impact encourage open sharing of information, feedback and mutual understanding. So, you know, employees are able to give feedback. They're able to, you know, talk to their uh, management and give feedback and understanding. So in conclusion, numerous factors impact the effectiveness of communications within a business. Organisational structures, psychological factors, physical environment and organisational culture all play significant roles uh, by understanding and addressing these factors. Businesses can enhance their communication strategies leading to improved and operational efficiency, employee satisfaction and customer relations. So these are the references for that part of the um, one, uh, what, sorry, 3.1. No, sorry, it's for the element of understanding factors that impact on the effectiveness of communications. So now we're going to go on to 3.1, which is to analyze the impact of organizational uh, relationships on effective communication. Analysis of um, impact of organizational relationships on effective communication. So why it impacts on uh, effective communication, why it's so important to look at communication channels um, and why it's so important to look at the impact of this on any organization. So, you know, when we look at an organization, what is the impact of organizational relationships? Why it's so important? Why is effective communication so important in regards to you know, looking at the element of communication within any sort of organisation. Why is there need to have effective communication? So, just a minute, so. So, you know, organisations, like we said, play a crucial role in uh, shaping effectiveness of communication within a business. The key topics are things like team coercion. So, you know, um, team coercion refers to the bond that holds a group of individuals together, enabling them to function as a single unified entity. Uh, it's about the level of commitment, trust and collaboration among team members which facilitate positive, productive work in our environment. So, you know, they reach a common goal. Uh, high team coercion is categorised by a strong interpersonal relationship, a shared sense of purpose and mutual support, leading to enhanced team uh, performance uh, and satisfaction. And we looked at the impact that has on communication. Um, team coercion is fundamental to internal communication as it directly influences how effectively team members communicate and collaborate with each other. A cohesive team is more likely to engage in open, constructive communication, share knowledge freely and work together towards common goals. An example of team coercion in internal comms is um, an, uh, an example of promoting team coercion could be organising regular team meetings where members share updates, celebrate successes and discuss challenges. Another example is creating internal communication channels, such as things like, you know, forums, chat groups dedicated to team projects, allowing for ongoing collaboration and uh, support. Personal conflict. So personal conflict arises from um, interpersonal incompatibilities of disagreements between individuals in the workplace. So when there's elements of that it could impact on communication so um, negative impact is that personal conflicts can create communication barriers as individuals may avoid interacting with each other it may misinterpret messages or engage in confrontational engages 
exchanges. This can result in decreased collaboration, efficiency, and morale. Uh, the resolution strategies, effective conflict resolution strategies, such as mediation and open dialogue, are essential to restore communication channels and maintain a positive work environment. Favoritism um, is occurs where preferential treatment is given to, like, if you have a favourite person, the employee, rather than other employees. The impact is it could lead to resentment and mistrust among employees and, you know, feel like they're, they're undervalued and, you know, you're giving more time to that individual and you they withhold information so they don't have this communication with you. The prevention is establishing fair policies and recognition and rewards can mitigate for favouritism and promote a culture, uh, avoiding any sort of impact of favouritism. Hierarchical line management and culture. The organisational structure, including the hierarchical levels and line management, are the overarching organisational culture significant influence on communication patterns. Um, the hierarchical structure, so positive impact is that uh, clear hierarchical structures can streamline decision-making uh, processes and ensure accountability. Negative impact is that excessive hierarchies can create communication bottlenecks, slow down the flow of information and lead to message distortion as information passes through multiple levels. The line management is that positive impact, so effective line managers can facilitate communication by acting as liaisons, senior management and employees, ensuring that information is accurately conveyed and feedback is gathered. Negative impact is that poor communication, poor line management can result in miscommunication. Organisational culture, so the positive impact is that a culture that promotes openness, inclusivity and encourages uh, effective communication, employees feel valued and appreciated and, you know, they will share their ideas and feedback. The negative impact, a toxic culture marked by fear, competition or lack of trust can stifle communication and collaboration. So you have to be really, really important when you look at the elements of um, communication. So the factors that we've gone through, we've gone through team coercion, conf personal conflict, favoritism, hierarchical structure, the line management and organizational structure. And that table uh, for each one explains the description around it and the impact on communication that it does have. So in conclusion, organizational relationships significantly impact on the effectiveness of communication. Factors such as team coercion, personal conflict, favoritism, and a hierarchical structure may play critical roles. High team coercion and a positive organizational culture enhance communication, why personal uh, conflicts, favoritism, and rigid hierarchies can hinder it. By understanding and addressing these factors, organizations can foster a more communicative and collaborative environment, leading to improved performance and employee satisfaction. So these are the references for 3.1. Now we're going to go on to 3.2, which is to assess the impact of non-verbal communication on the effectiveness of oral communication. Non-verbal communication can impact on how messages is received and interpreted by the audience, even more so that, than the actual words. Facial expressions, gestures, posture and eye contact can all enhance or detract from the message and can signal conf your confidence, authority or sincerity. Nonverbal communication can mean a lot of different things and all of them are important in being an effective communicator. The most obvious forms of nonverbal communication are your body language, your gestures. So, you know, these are the main forms, but we'll go through each one. Um, so the first one here is the tone of your voice. Uh, your tone of voice plays a crucial role in effective communication as it allows us to express our emotions, uh, you know, convey meaning, establish rapport, and influence others by perception. By developing a positive, effective tone, we embrace, uh, we can enhance our communication skills and foster stronger communication. So it could be, you know, it could be the pitch of our voice, it could be um, volume of our voice, the rate of speech. It could be intonation or it could be emphasis of our voice. You know, the pitch could play a big role. 
um, the volume, you know, it, how loud you are or how softness of your voice is, uh, the rate of your speech, so how fast you speak, you know, uh, is it really, really fast, what speed you go to down, you know, so it could be the element of, you know, um, the it could the tone of your voice uh, allows you to express a wide range of emotions and attitudes it could be you know that your anger it could be that you're sad it could be that you're happy um and it uh, the tone of your voice adds meaning and intention to the words it can exchange the interpretation of sentence entirely for example that's great with a sarcastic tone conveys a different meaning than saying it will be genuine enthusiasm. So, you know, you've got to be mindful of the tone of your voice because, you know, it has an impact on elements uh, and, and, you know, you need to be self-aware uh, that you are understanding your own tone patterns, you know, because they play a big role in it. Body language, um, and that that is a big element of... Um, you know, when we talk about communication, body language, uh, verbal language is what comes to our mind. However, in a broader uh, perspective, the terms of body language and nonverbal communication are missed out. Body language and nonverbal communications have a great impact in public speaking. Public speakers generate a lot of interest and emotion among the audience through these ways. So their bodies are an effective tool to clarify emphasis uh, the phrases they use while reinforcing their enthusiasm, you know, in regards to it. So why why we feel like body language is so important? It has an influential role uh, in in public speaking, as we said. Um, if you present your speech without any poise or expression, it is bound to be boring for the audience, irrespective of how good the content is. Uh, they expect better engagement from the public speaker. Uh, than the actual content. Uh, body language can go a long way in outperforming a speaker who doesn't pay attention to body language. Um, the content of your speech and body language should be hand in hand. For example, if you say if you want to say yes, you can simultaneously nod your head, which is a good communication sign. Positive effects of body language can enhance self-esteem, confidence and art of nonverbal persuasion. So, you know, eye contact, things like that, um, maintaining eye contact, nodding, like I mentioned, uh, using appropriate gestures. A negative impact is sometimes when you cross your arms or you have lack of contact, um, people feel um, uneasy. So eye contact, as we mentioned, is one of the best forms to engage with your audience. Uh, you should know the importance of nonverbal communication like eye contact. With positive eye contact, you can develop that rapport and give a sense of involvement. Um, and, you know, it, it plays a big part in communication. So when you're delivering a speech successfully, you have to focus on a lot more on just words as important as eye contact. So the way you, you know, there's advantages as well. You know, there's disadvantages, advantages of that. Uh, as we mentioned, it could contradict uh, the message indicating things like disinterest, discomfort, or disagreement, you know, um, dependent on how you speak and how you portray yourself. A negative and positive reinforcement of oral uh, oral message. But, uh, oral communication refers to the technique of use spoken language to transfer facts or thoughts from one character to another. Oral communications are human to human conversations that take vicinity in person, it could be uh, have an effect on one person, various individuals, or even a large group. Oral enterprise communication encompasses a broad variety of interactions. Uh, when nonverbal cues align with verbal messages, it strengthens the communication, making the speaker appear more credible and sincere. Encouraging feedback, so positive reinforcement through smiles and nods, as I mentioned, could ensure that ensure active engagement. Uh, negative impact, inconsistent nonverbal cues. When verbal nonverbal cues contradict for verbal cues, it creates confusion. For example, I'm happy to help with a frown or disinterested posture. You know, you should make your facial expressions different because you know it plays a big role on elements of that. <clears throat> active listening and focusing. So active li listening is where you make a conscious effort to hear 
not only the words that another person is saying, but all more importantly, the complete message being communicated. Um, in order to do this, you must pay attention to the other person very carefully. So it's really important you pay attention because that person understands. Um, you cannot allow yourself to become distracted by whatever else may be going on around you or forming counter arguments while the other person is still speaking nor can you allow yourself to get bored and lose focus so you know you need to make sure that you are actively listening to that individual you you know you're able to identify you know that you are listening because it's a huge part of uh, element of uh, communication to understand the importance of active listening ask, ask yourself if you you've ever had a conversation where you wondered if the other person was listening what you were saying you know you're in a you're in a situation where you're listening to people and the element of you know um oh God, sorry about that. um the element of it that it's you're not really listening to that individual and you know um you, you kind of and in this your body language also plays a role because you you're you're rolling your eyes or you know you're you're not listening and you're you know you're moving your head um, and, you know, it's a, a huge part of communication is active listening. You know, it plays a big role. Um, and, you know, there are different types of active listening that you can go. So you've got empathetic listening is when you listen to understand. Appreciation, appreciative listening is when you listen to enjoy yourself. Comprehensive listening is when you listen to learn something new. And critical thing, listening is when you listen to form an opinion so active listening is really important in communication and, you know, there's a need to have it. But they are also, you know, um, you, you, when you, especially in business, active, you know, it, listening involves mastering a host of different skills from learning, uh, you know, um, you know, you need to be listening to someone, you need to be paying attention, you know, um, and it could just, you know, for communication, it's a huge part of you know, reflect, uh, active listening is a huge part of uh, um, the element of communication because, you know, you're nodding your head to make sure you are listening so the other person doesn't feel like you're not listening to them. You're maintaining eye contact, you're mirroring expressions from the other person. You know, so you as a, you know, individual need to listen actively to that person. So you are trying to make sure that you are listening, um, you know, because it's a big skill to have. You know, you need to make sure that you are listening properly so that the person is feeling comfortable. Um, you know, uh, it is an element of you are acknowledging that person. There are different benefits of active listening as well to um, us. You know, they are becoming a better listener. You can improve your productivity and the ability to influence, persuade and negotiate. Pay attention. Active listening is, you know, to be an effective listener, pay attention. Show that you're listening, okay? You need to show that you're nodding your head, like we said, mirroring expression. Providing feedback is really important in active listening as well. Deter from any judgments. Respond uh, appropriately. So, you know, active listening helps you avoid any sort of conflict um, and misunderstands it. it. can be positively impact your productivity and relationships, it is important for people to feel listened to when they're talking and active listening ensures that this is happening. Um, so if the impact, positive impact is after listening, as we said, shows the speaker that their message is valued, encouraging open communication and fostering mutual understanding. Um, the negative impact, lack of active listening, uh, such as looking, interrupting, um, can undermine communication, makes people feel ignored. Um, so you need to make sure you are actively listening to the individual. So here's a, a table with the summary table in regards to nonverbal element, positive and negative impact. So let's go through the tone of voice. The positive impact of the tone of voice is reinforces enthusiasm and confidence engages listening listeners. And the negative impact is that contradicts message leads to misunderstandings and disengagement. Body language, uh, the positive impact is reinforces message through positive cues like eye contact and gestures. And the negative impact is that it contradicts messages with negative cues like crossed arms and lack of eye contact. Um, reinforcement contradiction. So the consistent 
the positive impact is consistent nonverbal cues, strength and credibility, positive feedback encourages speaker. And the negative impact is that it's inconsistent cues create confusion and mistrust. Negative feedback discourages speaker. The active listening, as we said, it's so important to be a good listener to improve your productivity and ability to influence, persuade and negotiate um, and to avoid any sort of conflicts in the workplace. The positive impact is that it shows messages valued, encourages open communication and the negative impact is that it shows disinterest, interrupts communication, uh, makes the speaker feel um, ignored so, you know, they, they don't feel like they're being listened to, uh, you know, uh, and you know, that the message is not coming across to them. So you need to make sure that, you know, by actively listening, you are able to understand the individual and you have, uh, you know, that you're making sure that you're listening to what they're saying. So in conclusion to 3.2, nonverbal communication elements such as tone of voice, body language and active listening plays a critical role in effectiveness of uh critical role in the effectiveness of oral communication. Positive nonverbal cues can reinforce the spoken message, uh, enhance engagement and foster mutual understanding. Conversely, negative or inconsistent nonverbal cues can contradict the message leading to misunderstanding and mistrust and decrease communication effectiveness. By being uh, aware and effectively managing nonverbal communication, individuals and organisations can civically can significantly improve their oral communication. You know, you you know, you have to refer to, you know, there are advantages and disadvantages of oral communication, you know, but you need to show you uh, are listening and promoting clarity and understanding and making sure that you are developing a connection in regards to your communication with, you know, the way you talk, the tone of your voice, the language you use, you know, how you portray your nonverbal cues, how you look at, you know, speaking slowly so that the individual understands. So these are the references for 3.2 that we used. OK, so now we've finished learning outcome three and um, there are ebooks and uh, journals available on Moodle for you that you need to refer to uh, in regards to completing um uh, the assignment or uh, an update on this, all the recordings for learning outcome one, two and three, which is today's session, will be on Moodle for you and any additional reading. Uh, I've got a link here that you could go on for effective business communication. And this link uh, will refer you to um, a, a PDF document and it looks at effective business communication and it looks at the Five, four primary sources of workplace communication, so oral, written, electronic and visual, and it looks at the effective communication, how it plays a big role within any organisation and any business, and how it's referred to in uh, in regards to um, the medium you use to communicate with the individual. We've also got uh, in the PDF document that you can have a look at is ways information flows in a business, and managers and supervisors, so upward, horizontal and downward, which we looked at earlier on as well in regards to co-workers and subordinates. Uh, we looked at oral communication in this, uh, and you've got the four C's to employ face-to-face -face conversations, consistency, clarity, concise and confident, which we mentioned earlier in Learning Outcome 3 as well. Telephone communication and the importance of telephone communication. Um, and then company team staff meetings and the importance of that. You could have a look at written communication in regards to any sort of reports, policy manuals, uh, and any sort of element of uh, how written communication works. Electronic business communication takes the form of memos, job postings. So this handout here is really important in regards to rules for email etiquette, looking at forms of communication, effective business, and then it looks at visual communication as well. So please have a look at this handout in your own time because it refers to elements of uh, communication in regards to um, a PDF document that refers to it. Uh, let's see if I can go back, sorry. So the link is there. Uh, have a look at the link. 
and have a read around the different types of effective communication in a business. Also, if you have any questions or any queries or uh, anything, just email learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk. Um, submission of the assignment to be done on learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk. Assignment submission is after two weeks of completion of the unit um, and two weeks of delivery. So uh, we've looked, um, just to recap on the session, if you've got no questions. So we've looked at the elements of um, learning outcome three, which we looked at uh, oral communication. We looked at uh, the impact of organizational relationships on effective communication, what team coercion is. We looked at some communication challenges channels in regards to barriers. Uh, we looked at the importance of business communication, effective communication techniques. We also looked at organizational structures and the factors that impact on the effectiveness of communication. So it could be cultural, it could be economical, it could be social. Uh, we looked at the uh, element of um, getting your messages across in regards to your language, your tone of language, verbal communication, non-verbal communication. The recap on learning outcome three. So the next learning outcome is learning outcome four, and then we have learning outcome five, and then we've got the assignment discussion. So if you have any questions uh, around learning outcome three or any other two learning outcomes, please email learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk. Also, um, please refer to any ebooks, any additional reading um, and, and the recordings of these three sessions on Moodle uh, that you can refer to to help you um, just uh, recap on all the sessions we've had. Uh, if there's no questions, uh, thank you for attending today's session. Uh, and the next session is uh, tomorrow, which is learning outcome uh, four. Thank you.